Hi guys, this is Dragon DragonGGY. Today I'm going to bring you guys IS3 Preview Info Part 2 and it's mainly about the 18 minute gameplay trailer that they just released yesterday. It includes a tons of content and I picked out some of the highlights for you guys to see what are the most interesting stuff that they showcase in that trailer. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing is a QOL changes. It is that you can now select your interested integrated strategy theme to pin on the terminal. So you can just say goodbye to Lucian and make it so that Mizuki will be on your terminal. Next, we have the battle pass rewards. So for the first month, you can get high more and all her tokens. So you can get her to full potential in the first month. The second month, theme avatar, pretty standard. Third month, uh, furniture pack one. And at the fourth month, we can get the Mizuki life to the skin. And it seems to be about summer. So we're about to get a summer Mizuki skin on December. Well, it's always how this game functions. So fifth month, we have the second furniture pack and something about module and it's some kind of module related item and it replaces the specialist six star token that was in is2 so well interesting to see what it is about so maybe something that can make you go from level zero to level three module something like that not sure about it six months we got a single piece furniture of this uh, is theme and then a second avatar uh, on the seventh month and then finally we have a main manual theme now we are getting into the actual actual gameplay and first they showcase more call of the call from the race effect so the first one is called augmentation and you gain three ingots when entering non-metal nodes but loses all ingots earned on this floor when leaving so it's basically a slight change from the hallucination one of the hallucination in is2 next is called the population and individual so you got command experience plus 50 percent but you also get enemy defense plus 50 percent so there's buff there's debuffs that's how call from the race works next we have details on high more so first of all she's a five star ripper just like la pluma and the skill one is exactly the same as la pluma skill one it's exactly the same okay skill two at level seven it has a initial sp 14 sp requirement 34 and has a 20 second duration the effect is attack plus 50% and gains 50% physical dodge. She will cover 7% of her max HP when an enemy is defeated within her attack range, so not necessarily killed by herself. And later in the gameplay, she was actually fine to recover elemental damage on her own, while the other operators doesn't do that, so it's likely not a collectible related thing. So it is likely that it will be related to a talent and it seems to be a pretty good talent because you can't really heal a reaper and if a reaper can recover you know elemental damage on the home that's pretty good so next we have a show of alternate ending well most likely because from the prompt that you can see at the bottom here uh, it's likely that if you make this choice you're gonna go into this ending so it was an encounter on first floor and you consume two hope for a collectible that will give you a plus one deployment slot and makes the tight hunter knight which is a character that was introduced well actually teased long in the lore and he showed up as Stardafera Nevis so he will be present during battle until he is defeated and upon collecting this relic, uh, the player will be shown a prompt on screen that indicates a secret ending is now triggered. So it says the ocean is the knight's enemy and the ocean has wet your clothes. So, well, you kind of turn into his enemy too. Next, we have a detailed showcase of local task node. So it will give you three difficulties of tasks. The hardest one requires you to finish the ensuing four battles where enemy HP and attack will be increased by 30%. Normal difficulty requires you to promote three operators 
other than using emergency transport. And the easiest ones require you to recruit two new operators. And the reward from finishing the hardest task that was shown is that either you get a random high tier collectible or you gain 12 shields, which the showcase does. And you can also get the collectible called Tulip's Secret Formula, but I'm not sure what that does. Next, we have a sighting of the new loot enemy. Let's call him the Weeping Doggy here. He is invisible. And once he attacks you, you got stunned. So it seems to be a quite troublesome enemy. Next is get what you wish node. And it actually is an optimized loot node from the previous iterations. So you can now pick between two collectibles and with one of the squads, you can have access to a third option, which is uh, available here and you're required to roll the dice before you get the relic from the bigger than one visual on the logo it seems that you may not be allowed to grab the collectible if you roll one well the wording here is also that you may be able to get this collectible so there's a chance you don't get it and but with good luck you can get an additional random collectible so in the showcase the player rolled six and he got an additional collectible okay next we have showcase of the a meeting in the storm node so it does what it says you can exchange collectible in this node but certain collectibles cannot be exchanged they were in the collectible showcase there but they are not available on the selection up there so they are either curse curios so they are debuff relics or ending related collectibles and you'll also be able to pick from two collectibles as your exchange candidates. So that's another optimization. It's, it's no longer a completely random one. You can now actually pick from two random ones. So that's pretty good. Next, we have showcase of one of the floor three bars and it's Sand Iberia from the story of Stoltifera Navis. You may or may not have read the story. I'm not going to do spoiler here. And he is featured as one of the bosses on floor 3 and he seems pretty devastating. So he has a high damage sidearm that only have one bullet and he will reload it periodically. And he also has a close range attack which is also seemingly very devastating. So he one shot it a elite one tulip here. So he seems like a pretty insane boss next we have showcase of into the wild node well as you enter this node you will select either to enter or not to enter a new secret floor and if you choose to do that you enter this secret floor denoted as question mark and upon your return you just simply continue from that original node instead of skipping another floor so it actually extend your exploration so that you can have a chance to get more, you know, command XP or get more relics to prepare for the boss fight on either floor five or and floor six. So that is pretty good. Next, we have showcase of the emergency transport. So you can first choose between assigning an actual operator or your logistics department to do the transportation. And if you choose not to use an operator, he'll give you three hope instead. And if you choose to assign an operator, the operator assigned will leave the team temporarily and it will return with promotion and some ingots. But in the showcase, they did not show the effect of removing rejection. They simply did not choose uh, operator that has a rejection on them. Next, we have a brief preview of the relation between light and dice. So you can see on the left here, on second floor and 100 light, when the player throws 8, he gets a enlightenment from the result. But going deeper, at lower light, on fourth floor with 35 light, as he rolls 4, he gets a rejection on one of the operators. And as he enters the secret floor, this time with 35 light and rolled 8, he didn't get a enlightenment anymore. It's just normal result, I guess that would be counted as. But on fifth floor, zero light, although he rolled six, which is a decent number 
he still got a rejection from it. So I think at lower light, it becomes easier to get rejections, even with relatively high roll number. So that's a sneak peek at the dice and light mechanism here. Next, we have a little collectible showcase session before the final boss fight. And here are some notable collectibles that he showcased and is new and it has some pretty interesting effects. So the first one is called Hand of Target Shattering and it's one of the hands we talked about in part one and its actual effect is that artillery, splash caster and flinger gets attack plus 15% for every target hit and it has a maximum at 150% plus. So hit 10 targets, you get 2.5 times of your attack. The effect resets when no damage is dealt in 5 seconds. So, the most simple way to buffing them, just add more attack. Next we have Super Modified Derivative Terminal. So summons, gets max XP, attack plus 30% and attack speed plus 30. So summoners seemingly still a very strong choice, especially Link with this collectible and the other hand collectible that we talked about in part one. They seem to be stronger than ever. Next, we have what I predicted in the first part. And yes, there's more King series of collectible here. So the first one is called King's Discus and all operators will get block two when only one life remains. The second is King's Twig where all operators recover one SP every two seconds when only one life remains. So they are all extension from the King's new Lancet, which is only a single piece in IS-2. And now we also have the Crown of the Kings and all operators get attack plus 50% when only one life remains. And the effect in, is increased to plus 150% when more than three King's collectibles are acquired. So now we have a complete series of collectibles here that we can potentially get them into a build, which is a good direction that I think they're trying. So this is the preview of the King series of collectibles. There are more. Uh, the first one is called Emergency Life Portion here. So the lower the HP, the faster the attack speed. You get maximum at uh, plus 60 attack speed when HP is at 30% or lower. So this is basically a Musha collectible, which is pretty good to apply it on every operator. Next, we have Guidance from Distance. So it will appoint a random deployable tile on which units deployed on it will get one SP every two seconds and recover 3% of max HP per second. Next, we have the return and upon triggering dodge, get six seconds of attack plus 130%, which is pretty insane. I think you can immediately imagine some operators that have dodge mechanisms on them to get great value from this collectible. Next, we have Duck Lord's Gold Brick. So it will upgrade the dice. So your dice can be upgraded into one with higher number of faces. So get a higher chance to roll higher numbers. And finally, we have the Hand of Dust Purification and it's something we also previewed on part one and its actual effect is that Bard, Phanax Caster, Therapist will do 50% attack as arch damage to all enemies within their attack range. And this is quite insane. I think this thing works with Lumen pretty well it will also work with Carnelian pretty well. So I look forward to getting it in the actual gameplay. And finally, we have a sneak peek at the final fight. So first of all, the gameplay's final note is on floor six as denoted by the six dot on top and indicates that it's on a potential alternate ending. And at this time, the player already has 34 collectibles which is much more than you will get on average with IS-2. Uh, with my experience, I think I normally will get around 20, sometimes more than 20, maybe 23, 24 collectibles if I play endings that involves me going into 6th floor on IS-2. So this is presumably because of a longer run 
and the effect of that additional floor triggered by the Into the Wild note. And the final stage that they showcase here is Skazi the Corrupting Heart as the boss. And the level description says human, sea bonds, and terror. And the one who Skazi's remaining humanity was expecting, their fate will be destined at this very moment. This is a very cool description. Can't wait to see what it's about in the actual gameplay. They also teased additional story elements in this IS3 where they will elaborate upon the different endings and talk about their background stories more. So that's all for all the gameplay trailer highlights. There's a ton of content and if you want to see the full 18 minutes for yourself, you can search for it on YouTube and we very much look forward to September 27th. So that's all for this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.